I did a poll a few, a while ago, like a few weeks ago, and go, um, a video that you want, let me, uh, make up, um, I'll fix it. Sorry, I have a bump on my face and it's annoying. And it's called a makeup bump. Well, I only called it because I had one before and it was like up here. And it's basically for makeup that sinks in your skin. So it causes like a bump. But if you clean it, it helps. But I asked you, I posted a poll giving you two different video ideas. And just so I could get your opinion, I was going to do, like, letting my fans control a day of mine, but I honestly don't have time for that. Like, I don't want to do that. And so the two options, I forget what the other option was because it lost by, like, a lot. But this one won, so I'm doing it, which is dance tutorial thing but I switched it up a little bit since I really want to incorporate the bar I'm doing dance technique training I'm going to be showing you like right, it's basically teaching you and improving you on your technique for dance and I can't I can't really move you too much because you're on a charger Okay, this bump is annoying me really bad. So, in a minute. Also, I will have a room tour coming soon. Because I did something kind of cool for me. So, we took down the indoor decorations. And, unfortunately, I have to set this down. I hate that. So, well, no, I'll pick it up. So I'm going to talk about technique and dance. So for those who don't know anything about it and they don't know what technique is, it's basically straight legs, point to feet, and feet, posture, like it's so much stuff. And let me take care of the bump since I got something right here that I can honestly use. It's technically um cleaner for like your ears. I mean you get them here. But that's honestly fine. Let me find some because this bump is literally driving me crazy. Okay, we're gonna fix that. Sorry, um, the bump was bothering me so bad. Like, it was bothering me and, like, getting itchy. And so I put an ear piercing cleaner on it. And it, what, it, I had this happen, like, I, one time at, at a time that I was wearing a lot of makeup because at the time I was, Filming, I wish I would have told him sooner. I still have one more scene to film. But I've been waiting in a while for that. I wanted my makeup bump to heal. Since I was wearing makeup like every day for like a time period straight. And like half the time like I was obviously taking it off. But like, you know like makeup bumps happen like. If you don't get all off, and there were still like a little bit of lipstick here and there, because <laughs> lipstick is so hard to take off, and I hate it so much. 
and I hate taking it off with the thing. And I always, like, don't wear lip makeup because it, like, kind of feels weird, but I do wear it sometimes, and I hate taking it off. That's why I don't wear it on a daily basis, because it takes me, like, 30 minutes to get off. But training time. So, we're going to set that there. We're going to start with some basic things. So, most people say you, like, grab the bar with your whole hand. That is wrong. And this is not the most sturdy bar, don't worry. We're about, um, sometimes my dad's going to glue the bottom a little bit. What you're supposed to do, this is true, you're supposed to only take three things. So you take your finger next to your thumb. I don't know what the fingers are called. Um, your middle finger and your finger next to your pinky is like, and you kind of just place it. On, and that's what you're supposed to do. And then your pinky, because I know what that's called, and your thumb, you place underneath. I'm going to place it right here. Now we're going to work on this position thing. So this, we're going to start with that side has to come down here. I think I good. You know, we're going to start with out. When you go out like this, really turn that leg. And so it faces that one. And then point that foot. Point your feet and then you're going to come up. Again, when you come up, point your foot. And a way that you can tell, let me come down for a minute, is your foot is pointed when you go up. And because uh, your entire foot should not be touching your leg, only like your toes and maybe the beginning of your foot. Like that's a nice solid point type thing. Like for me, I feel like when I point my foot, I never know what to do with my toes. And honestly, I still am working on that. You know, and, one of the basic things I learned with ballet, ballet was my best. I took a dance class and basically we did three different styles. We did a ballet, tap, and modern jazz. Modern jazz was probably the one that like, I was not the worst at, but I primarily wasn't the best at it. Tap was my least favorite and my worst. I feel like, yeah, here's why it was my least thing, because no one warns you that tap shoes are very slippery, and the first time that I ever, I actually wore tap shoes, like, I wore them once, like, before that, like, because a few days before that, we got tap shoes from Target, me, my mom, and my dad, which I was so shocked about, because, we never go to Target. Literally, that was like my first, no, my second time going to Target with my parents out of 15 years. And it was also my last time. Like, me and my dad have gone into Target like every once in a while. But for the most part, we, like, don't ever go. Especially now, since there's not a Target near here. But basically, if we, um, so the day that I got them, I, like, tried them on, made sure they fit, like, we tried them on in the store, and then we tried them on at home, and, but when, both times, I didn't really, like, it was on carpet pretty much, so I didn't know how slippery they were. But then the first time that I actually, like, wore them to take a dance class, it was on a gym floor, you know, that bad, it was terrible, I slipped, I fell, <laughs> once, no, and there was nothing to hold on to which made it work, the reasoning that we did it in the gym instead of our normal room that day was because, um, the fact that, um, because it was a civic center, or the one room that we was like the main meeting room, 
So anytime there was a meeting or something in our the room that they would do it in. And at first we weren't sure they were doing dance class until the person like up front said, yeah, we're doing it today, so you're going to be in the gym since there's a meeting going on. And so we were cool with that. It gave us a lot of room. Like our room that we had before was like, our main room was like m maybe just a little bit bigger than this bedroom. Yeah. Just slightly bigger, but also there wasn't, obviously there wasn't that awkward space. My door has like this awkward space that you walk in and then you have to turn to like be in my room. So yeah, I slipped and I fell and I hated tap since. Well, I didn't hate tap, I just, it was my least favorite style. I was always scared of slipping and falling and like, a gym floor is really hard to dance on, so yeah, warning. And ballet was my best because I naturally had that technique. We also did do one other thing, which was turns and leaps. Leaps and turns is what I called them, because it was leaps and turns. But back to it. <laughs> So when you do this, and you also want to make sure that, like, everything a nice full line. And then, straighten, you always want your supporting foot. I'm using my right foot. Uh, to be perfectly straight. And we're going to work on something. So it's a side I don't know what it's called, but basically it's over where your foot starts to point it and then it goes out, so like out, and then up, go to that, out, and behind. So that's what we're working. When you start a work, again, make your supporting leg straight your other foot pointed and then when you go out you really want to point that foot and when you go up make that line out and behind now when you go behind you kind of don't want to like you want it kind of cross legs I'm going to show you by sorry, the shirt is like kind of small. So now we're going to talk about. So when you go in front, you want a nice pointed foot, a nice straight supporting leg. Because if your supporting leg is not straight, it actually causes, and like it can throw you off balance and a lot of things. And thing and ultimately when the reason there's actually a good reason behind why you only use three fingers on the bar I learned this like day one of dance and it made so much sense which is because when you're in a big class and there's lots of people using the bar or it's ultimately to support your weight kind of like, because the bar can, you don't want the bar breaking, basically. Because when a lot of people are using it, it's holding a lot of weight. Versus when you're using only three fingers, it's taking some of that weight off. Because the bar is kind of to, like, hold you up and stuff, like, and, like, different things. And so that's like the reasoning behind the three fingers. Now, ultimately, if you're just at home and it's like you and maybe one other person or just you or maybe like, no, I'll say no more than four people, which is pretty much what we had at dance, well, like four or five people. 
Yeah. Um, now, it's fine to do your whole hand, but I do not recommend that because I feel like then when you do get in a natural, like, class with a lot of people, oh, you might forget that. Like, it's good to, like, constantly use the, that technique and use and the, like, stuff all the time, like, because you could always forget it and you don't want to, like, you, I always just use my three things because I don't want to forget it ever and I don't ever want to, like, mess up on it because it's a basic thing and for me, it's, I take it very seriously and we, like, if I see someone dancing and I have the chance to correct them, I am. I'm going to be a little bit harsh, but that's not me trying to be rude. I feel like I like working with harsher people than I do with people. I like that a lot more than working with people who aren't going to be harsh on me. I like being screamed at about my sickle butt because... I'm never going to learn if I don't fix it. Oh, and I like being a harsher teacher because I feel like if you can't handle a harsh teacher, you're not cut out for it, is what I'm saying. And it's not me trying to be rude, it's that um, you got to understand that someone that's being harsh on me, they're not trying to be mean. And unless they physically say, I'm trying to be mean, they aren't trying to be mean. They're just trying to make you a better dancer. Or so when you go to an audition and you're prepared and you know what you need and you're prepared for that, which is very, very important. And I'm excited for this summer because if things go as planned, which I'm hoping, that one might come down this summer, which is going to be so fun if she does. I say this because she comes down every year for like the past three years. And like she kind of came down. Um, like, yeah. And so it's like, I'm going to correct it. And it's not me trying to be rude. It's just, that dance I take so serious. Like, if I see a sickle foot, that one of my big pet peeves is don't sickle your feet. I don't have a lot of pet peeves. I don't have a lot of things that drive me crazy. But there is a few things that do, and I'm going to list everything right now, which is a bent leg, and that only... Uh, what I mean by that is... When I see someone dancing and they don't have a straight leg and it's something that you're supposed to have a straight leg, I'm going to point it out. I'm sorry. It will drive me crazy if I don't. Um, the second thing is a sickle foot. That's a big no-no to me. And I never sickled my foot in my life that I know of. Like when I was dancing and like truly knew what that was. Like I'm... Sure, probably in the past I sickled my foot before I started dancing and really loving dance. But since I started, it's like a big no. And I haven't because, like, no, I honestly haven't. Because I, I just naturally have the technique, which some people work really hard for and have to. Some people don't. And I'm happy with the technique. Although I wish I had the flexibility more. <laughs> That's something that takes a lot more work than technique. I feel like with technique, it's the thing that, like, you kind of learn how to do. And then you just got to, like, get it in your mind. And then eventually your mind just picks it up. And then, like, you have it. Versus with flexibility, it's a matter of if you're not flexible, you got to work extra hard to get there. The third thing that is a big pet peeve of mine is, and this is something that my parents do all the time, and it's the most annoying thing. I know that because when I was a baby, I slept in my parents' bed all the time. The reason is 
it wasn't them sparring and it wasn't tough when I was a baby. I used to throw up easily. So if you even laid me down all the way, I would throw up to the point where to the point where they actually had to take turns switching back and forth one after the other or staying up with me all night making sure that I wasn't fully laying down or else I would throw up. And so once we kind of got past that, we figured out what that was caused from. Because when I was a, a little kid, not anymore, I was allergic to milk. It would make me throw up. Now, when I was like, I think seven or eight, we went like, oh, I always like drink lactose intolerant. Then we like kind of went like, oh, my mom went like, oh, maybe she's not allergic to it anymore, but like, let's just give her a tiny bit because she doesn't seem to have any of the signs of being allergic to it anymore. Like, so we did like a tiny bit and I drank it and it would, and I handled it normal. And I basically had drank milk ever since and never had a reaction to it. And then the doctor cleared me. So I'm not allergic to it anymore. So yeah. Obviously I've thrown up since then, but that was because of other things. I'm just being sick. But every night my parents do this annoying thing. And we're like in their sleep, they'll go like. And I'm like. Mm. They make this sound. And it's so annoying. And even just doing it then made me cringe. That's a big no-no. And another big no-no is someone that has an asset with dance and they don't use it. It drives me crazy. What I mean is if you naturally have something that could be a big advantage in dance, like flexibility, technique, in performance, some anything that could help you in dance and you don't use it, it's going to drive me crazy. Because I'm like, and you have it, use it. Like, it makes sense that you can't, like, performance. Maybe you're doing a dance that doesn't involve a lot of performance, you know, or something. Like, you're, like, certain things you just don't use all the time. But, like, if you can, use it. And there's two more things on my list that I'm in. Mm. Um, point out which which is the annoying question thing when someone is so annoying that they keep asking you the same question over and over again that drives me mad I never really cringe from nails on the chalkboard I don't like it but I never like cringe over it it's not a pet peeve of mine, of mine although if I had to pick and like, if I had to pick one more on top of my list, that would be on there, but like. I, and the final thing is, someone that uh, is dancing and they are sloppy and they know they are. Like, someone that doesn't take correction and apply them, they just don't care. Like, they're like, oh. I don't need to fix it because I'm just because you're telling me that at my foot is sickled. Oh, I don't need to fix it because you're lying. Like I'm like if you, someone is telling you to fix something in your dance to make you a better dancer, you should fix it. You shouldn't be like oh you're lying about it. Oh you're I don't need to fix it. Just fix it. <laughs> Okay, that too. Sorry, I had to go on that rant. It meant a lot. So we're going to work on PK and relevance with the bar. If you don't have a bar but you want to like, do that, use a chair. Use anything that you can just 
for Kanye West. So we're, I think we'll start with Plink. When you Plink King, your feet need to kind of be spread out. And you bend. And when you bend, there's multiple ways. You can do arm out, or you can do arm out coming in. So I see. You can do arm up. Or you can do like that. Anything. Yeah. So basically, when you play cage, the only thing that I really have to say there is there are two different types of play cage that I know of. There's the play cage, and then there's devil play cage or something. I forget the technical term for it, which is, so a plink cake, you basically just kind of like bend your knees a little and go down a little bit, but you don't go down like crazy far. I think it's called the devil, and the technical term for the second type of plink cake, which is when you drop like basically to the floor. Now, <laughs> Both of them, all I really have to say and is do something with your arms because I feel like when you play K, it, it always looks weird if you don't do anything with your arm. Put your arm out to the side. Do something with it. Sorry, that, I just realized that's also on my list of pet peeves. <laughs> And also, the other thing is really bend your knees. Get into that. And that I love pliques because I can get a little bit more of a stretch in your arm because your arm's still on the bar. But also, it's just a good exercise. And it's, it's kind of like, I have to say, it's the closest thing out of dance that is close to doing an a squat, like, you know, like an exercise squat. You know when people, like, do squats and stuff and exercise? It's the closest thing out of dance to that, okay? And, and same with the second. We're going to move on to Releve. Releve, I do have a few more tips for, so let's get on. So, again, three. And if you want to, you can take and, and, like, this is your hand position, and when it's on the bar, you can make them touch, if you want. You don't have to. It's not really recommended. Mine don't fully, but I heard that. Okay, so that one is going up. Again, do something with your arm. So when you go up, really push up on your feet and then you really got to push up on your feet and with this I'm going to give you tips sitting down. <laughs> um, with this I have a lot of tips. First up straight legs. This you need both straight legs. Basic technique is straight legs. Um, sec second tip that I would recommend is do something with your arms like just do something with your arm. That's a tip that I would recommend. Third thing is to don't fully lean on the bar, and that makes sense. Let me explain. And this, I would say, would play cake. Like, with any dance move with the bar, is what I would say. Because what I mean is definitely the bar is there to, like, help you balance and all of that. With Releve, I feel like a good start if you are new to dance and you don't, like, you don't know anything about dance, you're just learning, like, Plinque, Releve, like, the basics, use a ballet bar. Or I learned with the bar and then kind of leaned off of it eventually to where I can do it without the bar, like, but it's honestly really helpful because uh, it's really, really helpful. Like, 
I because the bar is there to support you a little bit, but don't put all of your weight on the bar. Because again, you don't want the bar breaking. Because there, because you may think, and um, if I put all my weight on the bar, it's not gonna break because it's just me. But if you're in a class with a lot of people. Everyone's weight is going on that bar. Everyone who's using that bar. There can be a lot of people sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, that's like a big tip that I would recommend. You also, oh like here's something unique. This is kind of good. I feel like this is really good for like a few different things. Anything that involves putting weight on one foot, like relevant. In, like here's the thing. It's a good tip because a lot of dance, I feel like a fairly good amount of dance. And, that involve putting a lot of weight on your feet and sometimes you need stronger feet to handle that weight. And so this is a few tips that I would recommend. And I'm gonna probably, I might make a whole video on this. I think I might because it's a big area in dance, which is hop on one foot. That like you want strong feet and the way to get to strong feet I found is hop on one foot. Like just walk or like maybe just hop on one foot every once in a while. It will build strength in your your feet. That's something also um like this is kind of for all dancing, which is keep both legs, both sides of your body even. Now, this is something I am bad at. I try to keep, what I mean by that is make sure that when you do whatever you do, if you leap on one foot, if you turn on one foot, whatever you do, make sure you can do it on both sides of your body. I am bad at this. I should probably, I am working on it, which is I can leap and turn and I can leap on either foot, and I'm pretty good at uh, I am a little bit stronger with my right side. But I cannot turn for the life of me on my left foot. And I don't know why. Like, but yeah, like, hop on one foot, that's a good one. I really stretch out. Uh, try doing anything like jumping jacks can help like anything that uh, involves like really working yourself like and I mean legless they're always great like I elbow to knee or something I don't know what it's called that's really great all of that is going to build the strength in your feet and that's good because when you go on relevé, it's going to help you when you go to do a needle. It's going to help you. Tomorrow I actually get to get a needle in my arm. Sorry, I have to get my blood drawn tomorrow. Not the most fun, but it's fine. And like all of that, like when you do relevé, when you do a needle, when you do a leg hold, when you... Do let me think. And even a back bend I feel like sometimes involves strength in your foot or your feet can really be helpful. And so yeah, that's why I would recommend. And honestly the more you do relevé, relevé like with the bar, once you kind of get used to doing it on the bar and the more you do it, it you're gonna that's one of those things. I feel like take you not a lot of time to learn and pick up. So then pretty soon you can do it without the bar and 
texture perfectly good and then you can move on to other things. Now if you have your relevant, but you want to learn some arm motion, or arm, what I mean by arm motion is things to do with your arms to make like different, to make your relevé look better. I'm going to show you two. Oh no, me three. We're going to do it without the bar. So the first one is arm up. And with this, I feel like, okay, I'm going to show you like this is my arm position. It should be. You can do this, but I feel like that's not a good. Like, I recommend this. <laughs> and which is keep the hand, so when, this is what you want to have. So, the middle finger on your right side should be touching the middle finger on your left side. And when you go up, that's what it should be. That's something, also this. That's a really good one, kind of same thing. There's also, like, I forget. Okay, that one I'm bad at. Like, those are just some things that you can move on to to make your relevé. I'm gonna talk a few more things. We're gonna talk facial. Facial are important. If you're dancing, you gotta use your face. That's something that I'm very, very good at. And I feel like when you watch the music video, I wish I would told him sooner. It comes out at the beginning of summer. Like the very beginning of summer. So Bella probably, I don't know if she'll be here or not. We'll see because every year she comes at like different times. Like, I, the first year she came in, and I feel like she came in, like, April. No. It was before that. I feel like she came, like, super early, like, I'm super early, pretty much. The second year, she kind of came a little bit later, but not much. I feel like maybe two weeks later. And last year, she came a lot later, because... But last year, she was kind of splitting it, like, so she went to her dad's house for, like, a week. Well, no, more than a week. But, like, she had, like, spring break for a week, and she spent that, like, there. And then she kind of, because her schooling was online, so she kind of just stayed there and did it online. And then, like, until, like, the beginning of summer, and then... And I feel like towards the end, she came down here. But yeah, like, use your face. But in the song, I wish I told him sooner, you'll see that I use my face. And for me, it comes easy. Tips to get into that, I'll give you in a sec. And for me, it comes easy because I naturally have the technique. I naturally have the face. And it's and in the music video, the face, I feel like, for some people, it may, they may look at it and be like, that's fake or something. But it's honestly not, because it's how I truly look at myself. And so, like, yeah. Like, for me, it just comes natural. Oh, some tips to use your face and really get into it. I would honestly recommend a lot of tips, which is, the first one is look at the story, look at the character that you are playing. And if you are doing pretty lyrical or like pretty ballerina, use your face. And I mean, you can pull from that and be like, really? And like, listen to the song is what I'm saying. Like, listen to the song, look at the dance, and if it's like a more sad song, make your face more sad. If it's a more like happy song, put a smile on that face. Do something with your face. 
it's a pet peeve of mine that yeah, is when no one when someone doesn't use their face and like they had the most easy dance to use their face. But like what I mean by that is there's a lot of dancing that I feel like is easy. Like well no, not easy, but it's easy to use your face with because it has such a like unique like it has a storyline, it has a song that goes with it and it all leads you to kind of make an obvious choice for your face. And then someone like doesn't use it, I'm like biting my lip. Because you in your face. That's the tip that I would recommend is look at your storyline, look at your character and pull from that and use your face. Another tip that I would recommend I mean for this is more for flexibility. I mean cause acro and stuff. And to honestly just stretch stretch and watch YouTube tutorial is my biggest tip. Uh, stretch, watch YouTube tutorial, and you'll know, learn from your teacher. Or, and learn from anything that you can. So if there's ever something like, you read like a tip, or something like how to get more flexible, use it all. Like, if it's working for you, use it. That's your flexibility tips. I mean, technique, I feel like, I think, okay, I'm going to talk about what, in my opinion, makes a good dancer great. When I see a dancer, or, or a good, if I see a great dancer, what am I looking at, that sort of element. I feel like the thing that appeals to me that makes a great dancer is someone, well, first of all, a hard worker, like, Hard work pays off, like that's obviously something, because I will tell you that the person who is working hard, a hard worker, is actually the person that is, like a hard worker is someone that wants it, I feel like. Another thing that I look at is, is I look at passion. How much do you want it is the thing. If you're not passionate, if you don't love to dance, why are you dancing is the question. Now, if you love it, it will show in your passion. That's something, another tip I would recommend, or another thing I would say is, I honestly look for the most honest dancer. What I mean by that is, is I'm... I look for someone that is willing to admit their mistake. If they sickle their foot uh, and they admit, they're like, I, I shouldn't have sickled my foot, it wasn't good. I look for that, that's like a good element because it's saying that you're willing to admit to your mistake and you're willing to work hard on it to fix it so you don't do that mistake the next time. <laughs> Another thing that I look at is, is, are they trying? How hard are they trying? Is a big element. Cause I like a try hard person. Yeah. Another thing, this is the final thing that I look at is, is I look at someone that's dancing and they're loving it and they're in it, whether that performance, in, whether that's like the performance element or the actual dancing or something. And if they're in it, are they in it? How much are they in it? Are they 100% in it? Is the thing.
Um, yeah. Um, now we're going to talk turns for a minute. I am fabulous at turns. I naturally am great at turns. For turns, I would recommend spotting, pick an object, look at that object, focus on that object, and go 100% with that object. Also, I did want to say, um, I will not be doing that Megan Life show thing that I was going to do because it's a lot of work for stuff. And also, I did do a live stream pitching the idea, which would never me being like, oh, we're doing it, is seeing if you guys would like it. And honestly, it got a dislike, and that doesn't bother me at all, like, like, it's just telling me that maybe you guys aren't liking it. And honestly, I'm not going to put that much work into some. And if I don't have a high feeling that it's going to do great. Like, as much as I thought it was going to do good, after that, I'm, like, a little iffy on it. But I am going to uh, post a lot of great content still. This is one video really soon. I have a room tour. Coming. It is not done yet, but it is mostly done minus paint and minus paint and and the floor. Wait, let. But when you leap and turn, spotting is honestly the biggest tip that I would recommend is spotting and, and foot placement. That's something like where you put your foot, your foot placement. That's important. And with leaps, I would say the same thing. But with, I would definitely add something to that with leaps. When you point your feet, and this was a correction that I, I always, okay, I'm going to show you something. I would always land my foot flat like this, but you're supposed to point that foot, and, sorry, like point your foot, uh, I always thought you landed a leap when your foot flat. Turns out you don't. You point it and you land on the upper part of your foot. One more thing. Nope. That's it.